People have told me that they've had to choose between paying the electricity bill and buying food or paying rent. That's unacceptable to me. It is unacceptable that people in Ontario would be facing that choice. So our government made a mistake. It was my mistake. And I'm going to do my best to fix it. All right, Kathleen Wynne, the Premier of Ontario, who was on the weekend, she was talking to party loyalists and shouldering blame for the Ontario Liberals are wallowing in the polls. Well, let's find out what's behind all this from Martin Reg Khan. He is Ontario politics columnist for the Toronto Star. Martin, what was really behind that speech? What's the backstory there? Well, the truth is that internal Liberal Party research shows that Kathleen Wynne has a disconnect with people. We know from the public opinion polls, Don, that she is unprecedented in her unpopularity in Ontario, 14 percent, lower than almost any other premier. But what's behind that? She was once popular. Remember, she had a bit of a honeymoon. Before Justin Trudeau, there were other honeymoons. And she uh, pulled off an upset victory in 2014. Despite 13 years of Liberal government, she was able to get a majority government again. And she did that because the polling shows that people thought that she was a different kind of politician. She was more collaborative, more consensual, uh, had empathy, uh, had some vulnerability and humility. What they're finding now in their polling is that people think she's just like another politician. She's calculating. She's decisive. She's competitive. She's political. And so you saw in that speech an echo of some of that research because she acknowledged in some of her in some of her texts and some of her words that people think of me in this different way. And I aim to show that I'm a different kind of politician. And so she gave that apology, which is not the yeah, first time but, she's apologized. But Martin, there, we heard it a little bit with our strats just the last go around. There's a fury in the Ontario area land about these hydro rates. Uh, how does she do that, given that a lot of those rate hikes were done under the Liberal watch? That's a good question. And she has said she's going to pull off the impossible by lowering rates even further. What she did in the last few weeks is announce that she's going to remove the provincial portion, 8% of the HST. That's something the opposition called for. No one has any other great... That's, that's the low-hanging low fruit, low-hanging tax, as it were. The question is, how do you shave costs or reduce the increases uh, going forward, given that they have had to invest billions of dollars in trying to bring the system back up to speed after some years of neglect. So there's a, there's a political question as well. How do you not wear that anymore when there is this, this narrative that hydro prices are out of control? I mean, given your last panel, we may see other hydro increases in the rest of Canada as well as people go off of coal. All right. I do want to get you to switch topics on this. The federal crown prosecutor uh, says that Energy Minister Glenn Tebow, uh, we remember him, he was a former NDP MP, but that he sort of sought bribes to defect from the federal NDP to the provincial liberals. That's not a, that's not a breaking of laws because it's only a law <laughs> if you give a bribe. Uh, is, this, is this stain the brand even further in your view? I think it does. I think the liberals have taken a huge hit on this. My own personal view is that what we've seen here in Ontario is a bit of a repeat of what we've seen in the U.S., where there is a criminalization of politics. We could spend a lot of time talking about Sudbury, but what happened in Sudbury was that somebody had a tape recorder because they happened to tape all their phone calls, and some discussions were made. The Glenn Tebow thing is interesting. We don't know the full details about what he was offered exactly. It's not as if he was offered an inducement by a developer to run or not run. He was offered some compensation for the party, which we see with the progressive conservatives in Ontario. When somebody stepped aside for Patrick Brown, they were given a party job. When someone stepped aside for John Tory, they were given a party job on the payroll. So it depends on what you criminalize and what's regular politics as usual. One last question. I've got 30 seconds left. Can Ka Kathleen win? pull off a repeat of 2013. Can she make it back into the top of the polls? Well, repeat of 2013 would mean a majority government. That's very hard in Ontario, where you have very competitive three-way races. Uh, remember, you know, she won a by-election in a safe Ottawa seat that people were watching closely to see if she would have to resign if she lost that one. She held that seat. Uh, so at, at the end of the day, in a general election, as you know, Don, it's not a referendum on the leader you like or love or, or hate love to hate, is looking at all three and who is the lesser of the three evils. And Ontarians don't really know the new progressive cons conservative leader, Patrick Brown, yet. And he has some challenges he has to face on social conservatives and other issues going forward. You got that right. All right, Martin, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Pleasure. 
Well, he aims to conquer the Alberta PC party, but the party seems cool to the plan. They fined Jason Kenney for breaking campaign rules yesterday. We'll take a closer look at the battle for conservative Alberta after these messages. Please stay with us.